Shalom on the Sabbath day. Welcome to the Philadelphia Assemblies. Amen. Welcome to the, our, our services on the first day of Unleavened Bread, or Matzah. Okay? Mm -hmm. And today is the 15th day of the first month of the year 5783 on the sacred calendar, or set-apart calendar. Okay? And, and that's because we go by the full moon. So a lot of you that might be tuning in today think we're off. We go by the full moon as a new moon per Psalm 81, verse 3, okay? And other scriptures as well, but that's the main one. So if you're interested at all in why we do that, we recommend you go to <laughs> Philadelphia Assemblies and watch New Moon According to Scripture, okay? It's a, about an hour-long video, and in that, you should get complete understanding at least of how we keep it. Not that you're going to agree with that, but... Also, you might want to watch Keeping the Calendar According to Scripture, and you'll see why we are keeping the dates we are. So, and today also is, what's today on the Gregorian calendar, brother? You, got uh, okay. you did uh, right. It is, uh, yeah. 23rd, yeah. April 21st. 21st, okay. I'm getting close enough here I can see it. <laughs> April 21st, 2023, yeah. and it's a Friday, the preparation day for the Sabbath. So Yes, indeed. Yep. So, Brother Eric, whenever you want to get us started, or are, are you want to say anything about the message before we open it? No, bread? just the first day of Unloving Bread today, as Brother Bob just mentioned. And we're going <laughs> to, as always, start off in Leviticus 23. And we're going to read the uh, eight, first eight verses. Okay. For that, as always, we're going to open yep. in prayer. Almighty Father Yahuwah, again, we praise you for your precious Son, that you sent to suffer and die as the Lamb of the world to take away our past sins. Father, that's what this feast is all about. It's that Him being offered as our sacrifice and us putting on our Hamashiach Yahusha to become like Him, to make ourselves unleavened as we go through these days of unleavened bread. Father, help us to start work to put sin out of our lives. First, to recognize it through your Torah and then daily to spot those things in our lives and get rid of them so that we can be like our Messiah, Yahushua. So again, we thank you and praise you for that. We also thank you for the feast and this time to rejoice before you and the days of unleavened bread to help show us the way. Father, we also ask that you would bless this message that's given today, help it to be edifying to those that are hearing Father, we pray that you would give us the words to say. And again, send that extra anointing of your Ruach HaKadosh or your Holy Spirit to teach us all things. We ask it all in your precious Son, Yahushua, or Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we can start Leviticus, Leviticus 23. 23, yes, where they have all the uh, feast, feast days, days mentioned mm -hmm. here where obviously Yahuwah was giving those to Moshe to give to the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Deuteronomy 16 is the other place where they're going over in a little different detail, but still mentioning the feast. Okay, Leviticus chapter 23, starting in verse 1. It says, And the Lord, or Yahuwah, spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of Yahuwah, or Elohim in this yes. case, which ye shall proclaim to be holy, gather assemblies or convocations, even these are my feasts. So we know who they belong to. Yes. They don't belong to the Yehudim or the Jews. You know, they belong to Yahuwah. Yeah. And if we belong to Yahuwah or Elohim, we should be keeping his feasts. Go ahead, brother. Uh, verse 3. three. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You should do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahuwah and all your dwellings. Yep. And that's everyone's dwellings that belongs to the Most High. The, actually, the word Yehudim okay, means those that belong to Yahuwah. The, the tribe of Judah or Yehuda mm -hmm. carries the Father's name, and that's why we all want to be part of that. Yehudim. In uh, Romans chapter 2, 28 and 29, it says that, you know, circumcision is that of the heart, not of the flesh. 
And a Jew is one that is one inwardly and not in the, and of the heart and not of the flesh. Right. So that's the kind of Yehudim we want to be. Verse 4, these are the feasts of Yahuwah, even holy convocations, he shall proclaim in their seasons. Just briefly mention that mm -hmm. the rest of the feast, now the Sabbath wasn't included, it's a feast day, but it wasn't included in being set in its seasons. Mm -hmm. because, because it's a perpetual covenant that started in creation and continues to this day. We mm -hmm. work six days, we're all, and then we rest on the seventh day. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5, in the fourteenth day of the first month at evening is Yahuwah's Passover. Yes, and we know what they're talking about there is at even, mm -hmm. beginning of the fourteenth day, that's Yahuwah's Passover, okay? And the days when he passed over the children of Israel, it also was the day that our Messiah suffered. Now, yes. he met and took that supper, those Passover sacraments at the beginning of of the 14th after sundown because he couldn't have kept that Passover at the end because he was going to be the Passover lamb and he was going to be offered on the stutros for our sins. Verse 6, And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto Yahuwah. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. And the day of unleavened bread started for us last night. Mm -hmm. But all we always we understand our Messiah suffered at the end toward that latter part of the first of the fourteenth day, and he was in the tomb by sundown, okay, before the beginning of the fifteenth day. And he is become at that point he was becoming our unleavened bread. And there's much that goes with that. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7. In the first day you shall have a holy or set apart assembly. You shall do no servile work therein. No rigorous, no regular, mm -hmm. only that which we need to prepare food. That's what we do on these days other than assemble. But you shall, verse 8, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah seven days in the seventh Seven days. In the seventh day is a holy or set apart convocation or assembly. You shall do no servile work therein. Yes. Okay. Okay, now let's Exodus. skip over to Exodus. Go back to Exodus. <clears throat> Twelve. Twelve, and we'll pick it up at verse 14. We're just going to bypass the Passover part. Starting in verse 14. Because now we're dealing with uh, the day of unleavened bread. Verse 14 says, And this day shall be unto you for a memor memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to Yahuwah throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And, you know, that's what all his feast days are. They're memorials, mm -hmm. okay? And they're also prophetic, and they also point to end times. But this the first day of unleavened bread is, again, when our Messiah was offered for our sins. And it's also the beginning of the feast when Israel was pushed out of the from Egypt, in, you know, on there to the desert. So all these things are a memorial to us. Go ahead, brother. Okay, 15, seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses, for whosoever eats on a leaven bread from the first day to the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. And, and, and you know that, and they did that quite literally in the in the nation of Israel while they were in the Promised Land, because they were truly under oh, on the list, all of the ordinances and Torah at that time. Now we too shouldn't be eating anything loving knowingly, okay? But I, I've been doing this for 23 years, okay? And every year that I've done it, we, we would go through the whole house and go through the freezers and, and through everything and try mm -hmm. to get all the leaven out. And generally, sometime during the feast, you'll either find it when you're looking for something else or you'll, you know... Uh, you'll think of it. It's somewhere, oh, wow, I had a loaf of bread hidden in the freezer over here. See, it's an ongoing process getting sin out of our life. That's what unleavened bread is all about. We're yes. practicing 
for that millennial reign if we're in that first resurrection. And we need to be getting sin out of our life, but we, we're still in the flesh. We're not yet in the spirit. So it's a process of getting sin out. And no matter how hard you look, you're always going to find a way that you're falling short. So we want to make sure that we're getting sin out of our life. That's what, that's what this feast is really about. Go ahead, bro. Verse 16, and in the first day there shall be an unholy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be a holy gathering to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, only or except that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. Just like I mentioned back in Leviticus, that's the work that can be done. So that's mm -hmm. the only exception. Preparing food. Yep. 17. And he shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. You know, we're kind of having an exodus now. I, I truly believe that. A type. Okay? Because... The more I, I like, I said I've been doing this for 23 years, and Brother Eric's been 19, 18, 18, 18, 18 years, 19, yeah. years. And when I first came into the to what we would consider the truth, obviously not all truth. I didn't, know, I couldn't hardly find anybody that believed like I believe. I would look on the internet, there you know was no Facebook or any of those things like that, yeah. and you just couldn't find anybody hardly. You know there was a few, but not many, and now. Everywhere you go, I mean, even like last night in our service, we had people come that we'd never met before, and, and praise God, it was an awesome experience. So there is a type of exodus, and I look at my journey as, as a type of exodus. Amen. Amen. Coming out of Egypt. Yes, sir. Verse 18, in the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at evening, you shall eat. Unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at evening. Yes, and, and here's another place where it tells you a beginning in the evening and ending in the evening. Mm -hmm. So morning to morning, sorry I can't read it in the book. <laughs> Nineteen. Seven days uh, shall there be no leaven found in your house, houses. For whosoever shall eateth that which is leaven, even that life or that person, shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be stranger or born in the land. And you need to realize that. See, that's what we're really focusing on, is that we're not to be sinning intentionally. Mm -hmm. Hebrews, cha Hebrews chapter 10 says, once you've received the knowledge of the truth, and then you sin willfully, there remains no more sacrifice for your sins. So you can't be sinning willfully and during the feast of unleavened bread eating leaven is sin because Yahuwah said not to eat it or you'd be cut off so that's the kind of sins that we're trying to put out not that you accidentally had some leaven during the feast of unleavened bread that you intentionally didn't go out and do that not caring what Yahuwah said mm -hmm. so see that's the kind of uh, you know sin that we want to get out of our life that knowing purpose to sin. Go ahead, brother. Verse 20, you shall eat nothing leavened, and all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. So, and that's what it's all about. So, during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the leavening that is in leavened bread represents, it's a spiritual, it's a physical manifestation of a spiritual thing. Yes. It represents sin during the Feast of, Feast of Unleavened Bread to us. Verse 21, Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel or the upper door post and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. Verse 23, For Yahuwah will pass through the, it, to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, Yahuwah will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your, unto your houses to uh, smite you. Yep. And we got to, you know, realize that 
Because we always were looking at it, you know, you know, our Messiah, Yahushua, he died for Israel. Okay? And which is true. Mm -hmm. Okay? But it's also true he died for each one of us individually. And our past life of sin, which we all had before conversion, and we still sin even after converted, is why our Messiah went to the Stutros to die. So that we all could live. Amen. Verse 24, and ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to, for you, to you and to your sons forever. Amen. And it shall come to pass when you, you come into the land which you will give you, according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean you this by this service? Verse 27 that ye, ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of Yahuwah's Passover. And our Messiah is that sacrifice. Yes. This was a physical manifestation of a mm -hmm. spiritual thing that was getting ready to happen. That's what we need to be ready to tell people is that this is Yahuwah's Passover and that he gave his only begotten son that we wouldn't have to die. Go ahead, brother. Who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the, the head and worshipped. Amen. And the children of Israel went away and did as Yahuwah had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. Verse 29, And it came to pass that at midnight, Yahuwah smote all the firstborn of, of, in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne yep. unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. And you know, if you really stop and think about that, you can see how that's a picture of the great white throne judgment and how all those that are going to be in that judgment that are going to come short and getting cast into Gehenna fire, this these firstborns were a representative of that, okay? Because these people were the ones that resisted Yahuwah, and obviously Pharaoh, but we also know that Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart not once, but three times, okay? So this is all a sacrifice pointing towards us going into the, for the new heaven and new mm -hmm. earth, some in the millennial reign and some at that time. Verse 30. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, but there was not a house where there was not one dead. You know, there'll be a time when we may all be called to go to a place of safety. It's, this is no different. What we're reading right here in the Exodus is them going to a place of safety after this is over. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. 31, and he called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go and serve Yahuwah as you have said. Mm. 32. Also, take your flocks and your herds as you have said, and be gone, and pray for me also. Verse 33. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people, that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We be all dead men. Amen. 34. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their, their kneading uh, troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they uh, borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. Verse 36, And Yahuwah gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. Verse 37, And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sichal, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. Yep. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, flocks and herds, even very much cattle. Last verse, 39. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt, 
and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. Yep, and, and, and all the sacrifices in the temple were always offered with unleavened bread. And mm -hmm. the reason being is because, again, that's, sac that's representing the body of our Messiah, the same as the Passover lamb. Okay, okay Numbers chapter 33. <laughs> we're going to read just three verses here. Numbers 33. Numbers 33 and verse 1. These are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of Yahuwah. And these are the journeys according to their goings out. And they, verse, verse 3, And they departed from Ramses in the first month, on the fifteenth day of the first month, on the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with a high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. And, we re and when we read in Exodus and read that mm -hmm. all out, you realize they left and while it was still dark. They got them up around midnight or in the middle of the night, and they got out before sunup. So it was during the beginning of the 15th day okay. when this all took place. Now well, let's go over to, to the new, Newer Testament there. And John Newer. chapter 8. The Newer. Yeah, renewed. The Renewed. Yeah, there you How go. How you want to say it? Yeah. <laughs> the Newer. <laughs> the Newer. There you go. John, John chapter 8. I actually thought it would just be best that we start this in verse 1 instead of because there's about the woman there, yep. uh, and I thought this was a good to ha add all this in. I can get over to John. Where am I John chapter 8. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Does everybody got it? I think everybody got it. All right. John chapter 8, verse 1, And Jesus, or Yahushua, went in, unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again, or he came back, into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. Yes, did. Were you going to say something? No. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. Mm -mm, sorry. No, I'm letting you go. <laughs> verse 3, And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman, taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Okay, so they caught him, and the, somebody, obviously it's, they caught them, they didn't catch her, okay? And that's part of the issue here, okay? Mm -hmm. in, in the Torah, it's supposed to bring both people before you make judgment. And they right. weren't there. So obviously it was probably somebody they didn't want to reveal. And Messiah certainly knew what was happening. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5. Now Moses in the law and the Torah commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? Again, trying to trap the Messiah. See if he would go against the Torah. Mm -hmm. go, go ahead, brother. 6. And this they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Yahushua stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. No idea what he was writing, right. but I got a feeling <laughs> it was something in the, you know, of Scripture that he was scribbling in the dust. Go ahead. Seven. So when they conti continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at him. So, and you know, you think about that, you know, there are not many people, nobody, except for the Messiah, that would have been qualified to make yeah. that judgment. If we had to go by, you know, he that committed, had no sin, cast the first stone, none of them could, and they were all convicted as such. Go ahead, brother. And verse 8, and again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Verse 9, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. 
and Yahushua said was left alone, and a woman standing there in the midst. And when Jesus or Yahushua had lifted up himself and saw one, saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those of your accusers that have no man condemn you? And she said, No man, Master. And Messiah said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Some, you know, and some people think that he did something contrary to Torah right then. Not at all. Torah says on the mouth of two or three witnesses, mm -hmm. credible witnesses, let a thing found be found so. He didn't witness it. So he didn't, neither does he judge her. Even though right. he was without sin and knew the truth one way or another, he didn't judge her because there was not any witnesses. They were all gone. That's why he said, where are your accusers? Go ahead, brother. Verse 12. Then spake Jesus or Yahushua again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is, this is just incredibly deep when you hear mm -hmm. Messiah say things like that. If you look, if you read in Revelation 21, it says that the Yahuwah and the Ruach would be the light in the temple, and the Messiah would be the lamp. See, there's many descriptive things in Scripture that makes us understand how he's the light of the world. You know, mm -hmm. yes. And that Ruach is the light. It's in mm -hmm. him. And that's what this is speaking and testifying. Go ahead, brother. 13. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, you bear his record of yourself. Your record is not true. And 14, and, and Yahushua answered and said unto them, So I bear a record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know where from where I came and where I go. But you cannot tell where I came, come and where I go. That's because of that unity of the Spirit uh -huh. that he had with the Ruach, you know, they didn't understand that at all. They had no clue. Most people today don't understand how Messiah knew. He knew because he was at one with the Father through the Ruach, and the Father, he knew the Father's thoughts and everything. So there was no judgments that needed to be made. And his he was not bearing record of himself. The Ruach that was in him was bearing record of him. Go ahead, brother. Verse 15, you judge after the flesh. Yes, sir. I judge no man. Amen. Yet, and yet, if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. He's not alone because the Ruach in him is mm -hmm. the Father's spirit. So you couldn't have any closer relationship yeah. than that. Yep, 17, it is also written in, in your law, or Torah, mm -hmm. that the testimony of two men is true. There's what we were talking about, Deuteronomy 19, <laughs> verse 15. Verse 18, I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bears or testifies of me. Amen. 19, and then, they, uh, then said they unto him, Where is your father? Messiah answered back, You neither know me nor my father. If you had known me, you you, you should have known my father also. And, and you know, like I said, the, the, the Ruach is what came down in the temple when Solomon was there, and that was the glory. It was called mm -hmm. they called it the Shekinah glory that was upon the temple. And this is the same glory that's upon our Messiah. Amen. And and he's explaining this to them in a way that they, there was no way they could understand. It was a parable, but he but he was plain, speaking plainly. He said he told them, "You never knew me," because that's why Israel rejected Yahuwah in the wilderness because they rejected his ruach, which was what led them in the wilderness. It was what fought for them when they went against other the other nations. This is what Messiah is explaining, and, and again in a way that they couldn't understand without that spirit or ruach dwelling mm -hmm. in them. Go ahead, brother. Twenty. These words spake Yehusha in treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Amen. Twenty-one. Then said Jesus or Yehusha again unto them, I go my way, and you shall seek me. 
and, and shall die in your sins. Where I go, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he said, Where I go, you cannot come. Verse 23, And he said unto them, You are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. And, and you know, this is the same thing that Shaul or Paul was teaching us in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You know, what comes first? The flesh. And, you know, that's what he's talking about. He said, you're from below. You're above the earth. You're of flesh. Mm -hmm. And I am from above. Okay, and the Ruach, again, is what's speaking in him. And that's what he's telling them. He said, you're going to die in your sins. Because he knew their heart. And he knew where they were and everything they were trying to do at this time. Go ahead, brother. 24, I said, therefore, unto you, that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he. Amen. You shall die in your sins. And they, they, they got the he added here. And, but, you know, obviously this is the Messiah is saying that because, again, the Ruach is what's speaking right now. Go ahead. 25. Then said they unto him, Who are you? And Yehusha said unto him, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. Yes. I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Yep. Same one that sent Yahushua is the same one that sent Johann the Immerser. Okay? Yeah. That, you know, Johann was come to prepare a way for the Messiah, and Messiah came to prepare a way for the Father. And we, Yehua, and we really need to get that in our understanding. Go ahead, brother. 27. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Amen. Then said Yahushua unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father have taught me, I speak these things. Yep. And he, you know, there's some strange, uh, strange opposites or parallels in Scripture. In, in, in the wilderness, the uh, children of, of Israel lifted up a serpent on a snake. Mm -hmm. And that was a state, or that's what they were, this is what this is representing. And they were going to lift up the Son of Man, the Ben of Man on a stake to die for the sins of the world. And that's what, and he's letting them know that in plain English, they're the ones that's going to kill him, not him going to kill himself, as they had said earlier. Go ahead, brother. 29, and he said, and he that sent me is with me. Amen. The Father hath, hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Now, how do you figure that he's the Father? I mean, he tells you this over and over again. He says, he that sent me is with me. Now, how was he with him? The Father was with him through that spirit, that Ruach HaKadosh, that Holy Spirit yeah. that was dwelling in him. He said, the Father had not left me alone because he sent him the Comforter, the Holy yes, Spirit, sir. the Paraclete, okay? And, and that's what he's speaking of, the same thing he speaks of in John chapter 14 that you really need to break down and understand. Go ahead, brother. Verse 30, as he spoke these words, many believed on him. And then said Yehusha to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Students, understudies, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Every one of us need to be disciples of uh -huh. our Messiah. 33, they answered him, we be Abraham's seed, or descendants, and we're never in bondage to any man. Hmm. How says you, you shall be made free. <laughs> How in the world could you make a statement like that with the understanding they had to have just from past down? I mean, they'd been in Egypt 430 years. Mm -hmm. They had been in Babylon. You know, I mean, I'm a slave to no man. Might rethink that one. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, and the Messiah answered back and said, Truly, truly, I say unto you, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abide not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. Amen. And all of us are promised to be sons of God. Okay? And sons are those that are subservient or obedient 
to the Father. And the only way we can do that is to mimic or, you know, be like our Messiah who kept the Torah perfectly. Go ahead, brother. Last verse. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Not free from the Torah, free from your past sins. All right. Matthew 21. Let's go to Matthew 21. Let's do a quick read here about him writing... Um, don't. Psalm or Psalms, or, uh, Matthew. Matthew. Not Psalms. I don't know where I got Psalms from. Matthew twenty-one, starting in verse one. You there, brother. Mm -hmm. He said, and when they drew near unto Jerusalem, and they and they were come to Beth Bethage, Bethage. Beth Unto the Mount of Olives, and, and then sent Yahushua two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against or opposite you, uh, you, and straightway, immediately, you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. Yes. And if any man say aught or anything <laughs> unto you, you shall say, the master have need them, and yep. straightway he will send them. Yep. And all this be done that it might be fulfilled with that which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, thy your king comes and uh, unto you, meek and sitting upon an ass and a colt, the foal of an ass. This is uh Talk, told us in the book of Isaiah 62 11 and also talked about in Zechariah. Zechariah, and, and we're going to read that next. Flip okay. over to Zechariah chapter 9. And you could also find this, and we're not going to read it, no. but you could, you could also Tell find God. it in Genesis chapter 4, all the way back in yep. Genesis, mm -hmm. where it talks about that too, and then about the gathering of his people. Mm -hmm. But here we're just going to read Zechariah's account because that's what they said was fulfilled. Yes. If I can get over. There we go. Zechariah 9. You know, and there's a one particular verse that we're trying to strive at here when we get to it. Yeah. But starting in verse 9. Still turning. I am. <laughs> Just gives everybody else a chance. Yeah, everybody else. Zechariah, and if you don't know where Zechariah, it's right before Malachi, and that's right toward the end of the Old Testament. Okay, uh, and then we just read what with the account there in Matthew, right? Okay, here it is in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes, cometh unto you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, the colt, upon a colt, the foal of an ass. So, and this would be what a lot of people would call Palm um, Sunday. Right. Okay, this would be the day that they're... He's getting ready to come in, and it's, you know, getting prepared for mm -hmm. the, his, his sacrifice. Go ahead. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and a horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the nations, and his dominion shall be from sea, even to sea, and from the river, even to the ends of the earth. Verse 11. As for you also, by the blood of your covenant, I have sent forth your prisoners out of the pit wherein there is no water. Now, there's a ton of prophecy <laughs> fulfilled there that yes. a lot of people may not be reading into it. So, you know, he's, he's talking about right here. He says he's going to cut off the chariot from Ephraim. We know Ephraim trusted in horses and things. And so he's cutting it off. And the horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off. That's that's Israel's power. It's talking about taking away their strength. Okay? And then he says, he, he will speak. Now, obviously, he's talking about the Messiah. He will, he will speak peace unto the nations, opening the door through the Spirit, okay, for all to come in, whoever. We see, we see that in Acts chapter 10 when the Spirit falls on 
to the Gentiles or to the nations. And that's how our Messiah is making it way for all of us to become part of that commonwealth of Israel. And his dominion, our Messiah's dominion, won't just be in Israel. It'll be from, it shall be from sea even to sea. And from mm -hmm. river even to the ends of the earth. And it mentions again, as, and as for you also, the blood of your covenant, and he is the blood of our covenant. Amen. Amen. But he was taken away the sacrifice by the blood of the covenant through our Messiah. That was their blood of the covenant. And have sent forth your prisoners out of the pit, talking about pointing toward the grave, wherein is no water. Well, we, now where are we going? Yeah, Matthew 26. We're going to read the first two verses. And then we're going to uh, skip down to verse 26. I'm going to read what? Matthew 26. chapter 26. Verses 1 and 2. Everybody a chance to be there already? Okay, so, and it came to pass, when Yahushua had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, you know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is to be betrayed and be crucified. So it sets the stage here. It's telling you it's uh -huh. two days before the Passover. And when they're talking about the Passover, they talk about the whole Feast of Unleavened Bread as the Passover. Okay, But they also were getting ready to prepare for the beginning mm -hmm. of the Passover when the Messiah was going to give his sacraments that we were to do till from the time he suffered and for, so forth. And then skip down to verse 26. That's why. Right. And as they were eating, Jesus, Yahushua, took bread and blessed it, and he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the new, new or the renewed testament of yes, covenant, renewed covenant. With, which is shed for many for the forgiveness or remission of sins. Just think back in the temple again. All those years they were offering those unleavened cakes and that wine. Mm -hmm. That was all pointing towards the body and the blood of the Messiah who was going to replace this. Amen. Yes, sir. Acts chapter 2. A couple of verses there. Could have moved along now a little bit. <clears throat> Acts chapter 2. Of course, in context, that's dealing with uh, the time when they were at Pentecost. Yep. <clears throat> yes, sir. Let's see, 30. Yeah, I had, I had a little typo error, but I did fix you it. said Acts. Chapter 2 and verse I'll 36. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly for certain that Yahuwah had made that same uh, Yahusha, whom you have crucified, both Lord or, and the Messiah, Christ. Yep. He says right there, basically saying, Master, Master or, or, yep. or the representative of the Most yes. High to the Hamashiach. There. Well, Verse 37, and when they heard this, they were, they were convicted in their heart and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Verse 38, And Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, or Yahushua, mm -hmm. the Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And at this time they were receiving it by the laying on of hands of the the mm -hmm. apostles at this time, because they'd already been sent out, okay? But, again, Acts 10 shows us that that didn't, wasn't necessary anymore when it started with the nations. Romans chapter 3. Go to Romans chapter 3. And this is the Paul breaking down what sin here. What sin? Verse 23. Because we all have sinned and will again and have Unless come die short, after fall all. short of the glory of Elohim. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Important to read all this in context from 23 Amen. down to 31. Okay? Yes, sir. Because right there in 23, he's starting the, the statement and the thought. Okay, But here they hack all this up, you know, with... 
Verse 23, for all have sinned and come or fall short of the glory of Elohim, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Yahushua. That's the only redemption we can ever mm -hmm. receive. It's not because we picked up the Torah and did that. It's because we picked up the Messiah and we started following him. And that's the true redemption, and that's what we need to understand. Go ahead, brother. Okay, just one second. The 23. Oh, he's Verse, got, he's Greek yeah, 25. Uh, 25? Mm -hmm. 24. 24. 24. No, you're right. 25. No, 25. Just read it. <laughs> it says, Whom Yahuwah has set forth to be the propitiation or the atoning sacrifice. Amen. Through a faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission or the passing over of the sins that are passed through the forbearance of the Almighty. You know, you have to think back to when Messiah. Told him if you don't eat of my bread, eat of my body, and drink of my my blood, and they they couldn't get that at all there. But Paul or Shaul here, he under he's he's explaining that clearly to people that that's what this is all about. That we're taking on the body because his body was a, an atoning sacrifice through faith in his blood that was shed to take away our past sins. Okay, the twenty six, right? Mm hmm. 26, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and a justifier of him which believe in Jesus or Yahushua. Yes. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law or Torah? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Yeah. But when we, when we keep the Torah by faith, that's the absolute rep, you know, physical manifestation of your faith. You know, people want to take the word faith and make it into its own thing, like, oh, I just have faith. Well, if you don't have works, as James put it, then where is the faith? Faith without works, it doesn't exist. Go ahead, brother. And then that was 28. Yes. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the Torah. Okay. You see, and this is where that's where they like to take that. One. I take that one verse out of the context, context there. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is important in these next three verses. It is. is he the God? And is God here is equivalent to Yahuwah? Yes. Of the Jews only, is he not also of the Gentiles and all the nations? Yep. Yes, of the Gentiles also. Ethnos. That word Gentile uh -huh. is ethnos in the Greek, and it's fourteen eighty four. And they, they translated a lot Gentiles, but it means nations purely. Go ahead. Verse 30, seeing it as one God, and, as, and God here is equivalent yeah. to Yahuwah, okay, mm -hmm. which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Amen. Now here's the big question here. Now verse 31, do we then make void or nullify the Torah through faith? It says, God forbid, or never, may it never be. Was, yea, we established the Torah. See, the, I, I don't see how you can not read that after he's, mm -hmm. just because he said we're justified by, not by the deeds of the law. But Amen. through faith, we prove the Torah. And that's exactly what I was talking about. You emulating our Messiah and keeping Torah. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, starting at verse 4. Okay, Colossians chapter 1, verse 4 through 14. Since we heard of your faith in Christ, Yahushua, and all of the love which you have to all the saints or the believers, for I'm in the right place, right? Yes. Yeah. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of truth of the gospel. Verse six, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bring and bring forth fruit as it does also in you since the day you have heard it and knew the grace of the Elohim and truth. Now, 
Think about this. You know, a lot of people think, you know, when he's talking about the, the gospel or the bezor in Hebrew, that they, they didn't hear that until Messiah came. You know, that's why we've got the four gospels now, okay? But the, the, the bezor, the gospel, had been promised all the way back, like Eric was saying, even in, in, in Genesis, okay? And when Abraham was here, that covenant he made with Abraham, that was talking about him becoming the father of many nations. And how did he do that? Through faith. Abraham believed Yahuwah, and it was it's counted to him as righteousness. This has never changed. The whole of Israel was preached the Bezor the entire time that they were in the wilderness, when they were in the promised land, when they were in the captivities, when they were... You know, and even up until this very point, the Messiah was showing them again the bazaar. It had been preached to them from the beginning. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7. As you have learned of Ephras, 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 our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. And that spirit he's talking about is the Holy Spirit or the Ruach. Mm -hmm. and obviously, you could see that by the fruits of the Spirit. Okay, we know what those are. Go ahead. Verse brother. 9, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with, with the knowledge of his, his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of, of, of Yahuwah unto all pleasing, being fruitful into every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Elohim. See, and and we, that's what we have to be doing. And, and, and this was just being noticed by the people of, in the, of Colossae, mm -hmm. you know, as they walked their walk. He said, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, don't cease to pray for you. And that's what leaders do. They pray for the congregation and desire that you be filled with the knowledge of his this word his here if you look at it in the greek it's got the same kind of you know ending on it as you would on elohim and so his will we're talking about the mm -hmm. father's will and along with his spirit in him all wisdom and spiritual understanding you can't get it any other way it comes from the father it's delivered to you through the comforter or the ruach and that's his will, in that you might walk worthily of Elohim unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, again, showing forth the fruits of the Spirit, and increasing in the knowledge of Elohim, which mm -hmm. yeah. everything, every word proceeded from the mouth of Yahuwah is what he's talking about here. Go ahead, and, that, and it doesn't say anything about stopping there nope. in that verse. Does it? it says nope. increasing. Increasing. Verse 11, strengthen, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. And it's amazing how descriptive the mm -hmm. Greek actually is in the New mm -hmm. Testament because even the word his every time here has the same ending on it as it does on the word here that would be uh, Theoe, which is right. equivalent to Elohim. It's very descriptive. Unfortunately, it just wasn't translated very descriptively. Yeah. And we know it's got a lot to do with Trinitarian doctrine. Verse 12, Giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet or fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the believers in light. Now, that's a bunch. Mm -hmm. Okay, we had to come into this through the blood and the body of our Messiah, and we and we come into what? Into the light, which mm -hmm. is his Ruach, okay? That was created at the beginning of creation. Amen. He made that spirit go forth when he said, let there be light, and there was light, and it was good. 13, who hath delivered, delivered us from the power of darkness Amen. and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Okay, so he's already translated us if he's called us, and he already knows if you're going to be chosen. And what did he translate you in? To the kingdom of his son. Amen. That first resurrection. 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, Amen. even the forgiveness of sins. 
Yeah. Yeah. In right. most places it says sins that are past. This mm -hmm. one doesn't, but it should be understood. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 5. Thin on pages. Yep. Very, very thin. Okay. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Be therefore followers of Elohim as dear children. Amen. And walk in love as Christ the Messiah also have loved us and have given himself for an, us an offering and a sacrifice unto the Almighty for a sweet smelling Savior. Yep. Words equal to the word El yep, yep. or the Mighty One, and obviously he's talking about the Almighty. Mm -hmm. You got that right. Verse 3, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as you become uh, saints or believers. Have we read the Torah? Because if you haven't, you really should take mm -hmm. the time to do that. Because all those things are mentioned in the Torah that we're not to do. In the Ten Commandments says, you know, tells us about covetousness, okay? You can't do what this says without the law, the Torah. Go ahead, brother. Verse 4, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which is not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. And, and again, the Torah re identifies yes. what's filthy. And it, it, and it tells us not to be in jest or, or joking about things of that nature. And we know also being convenient would have been better translated fitting. So it also allows us to know what's fitting and proper and what's not. Go ahead, brother. Five, for this you know that no whoremonger nor unclean person or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of the Messiah and of Elohim. And, 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 and it tells us that again in Revelation and these are not saying that all of us haven't done some of these things. We all definitely have. But we didn't practice them. Because those things that you practice, okay? If we practice those things, we're not sons of Elohim. We're sons of Satan, of Ha-Satan. Because who you serve, that is who is your master. Go ahead, brother. This next verse is a, is a you know, pretty big, uh, it gets, seemed to be forgotten. Verse 6, let no man deceive you with empty or vain words. For because of these things comes the wrath of Elohim upon the children of disobedience. What did he just say? He said everything, that all mm -hmm. these things they were doing to break the Torah without caring, you know, purposeful sins. He, all those, the, 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 the wrath of, the, of Elohim is going to come down on those children of disobedience. If you're not, who are you going to be in disobedient to if you're not disobedient to his word. Okay, we one more verse. Mm -hmm. Be that not therefore uh, Partake. partners or partakers with them. Amen. See? Don't do that. I mean, let's, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. I'll just back up a chapter. Okay. You don't even have to turn the page. Have, not in mine. Ephesians 4, and I'll start in verse 10. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And what do you think he's talking about there? He's talking about the Ruach. Mm -hmm. That's what that's talking, that he might fill all things. Go ahead. Verse 11, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers Amen. for the perfecting of the saints or the believers for the work of the ministry for the edifying or building up the body of the Messiah. And that's every one of us as mm -hmm. part of that body. And some of us, were, again, were called to be sent out or apostles, and some were prophets, and some were evangelists, those going out and bringing those in, and some pastors and some teachers. Uh, verse 13, Till we all come in the unity of faith, and the knowledge of the Son of Elohim unto a perfect man, or mature man, yep. unto the measure of the stature of fullness of Christ and Messiah. Now, now, did he say that we, we're none of us are really to that point, 
but we're supposed to be striving to get to that point. That's what mm -hmm. he said. He said, till, till means obviously we can, we can attain that until we all come into the unity of faith. We're certainly not as a whole, a body in the unity of faith. It, it, it really hurts me a lot of times when I see people, you know, putting each other down on differences of degree of, of, of yeah. opinion on scripture. And until he says, and of the knowledge of the son and of Elohim, the son of Elohim unto, uh, to the mature man that shows when we're doing that, that shows we're still immature in the word unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Hamashiach. And obviously we're not there yet. Go ahead. Bro. 14 that we hereafter be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of teaching by the trickery of men and cunning cleverness or craftiness, whereby they lie to wait to deceive. And it's just like clicks. You see it all mm -hmm. everywhere. You get one group, a new type doctrine comes out and everybody rolls with it, you know. Without proving it. Without proving it in the Quick. scripture, through the spirit, yep. and that's what you have to do. Go ahead. 15, but speaking the truth Amen. in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. That's Messiah. saying every one of us needs to reach that full stature mm -hmm. of our Hamashiach. Go ahead. 16, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and held together by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working and a measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the building up of itself in love. Yeah, that's all trying to go on, but it's there's still a lot of resistance going on. Go ahead. This I say, therefore, and testify in the mighty one, yes, that right. you henceforth not walk as other nations walk in the vanity of their mind. Now, if we're not under the Torah, which we know Paul says we're not under the Torah, mm -hmm. and he also says, but we are under the Torah, okay? Then how are we going to perform these things he says he says this i say therefore and testify in the mighty one that from now on you walk not as the nations how do the nations walk any way they want to mm -hmm. and if you don't have the torah to show you the example you can't walk like the messiah walked go ahead brother 18 having the understanding darkened amen being alienated from the life of elohim through the ignorance that is in them because the blindness of their heart. And that's hard statement, but it is so true. Because some are blind because the, the fathers blinded them, okay? But some people are blinded through their intentional ignorance. And that's the one you better be worried about. And they do that because the, you don't think the Pharisees did these things. They did because the father had completely, they had the Torah, they understood it, but they had an evil, wicked heart. And our Messiah knew that. Go ahead. 19. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. Yep. And to work all uncleanness with greediness. Greediness. See, that's the fuel for the uh -huh. fire that it drives is. the whole system of the world. It's not just the United States or uh, one country. It's the whole world. We're talking about Babylon, spiritual Babylon. That's what, that's what it is. It's all driven by that greediness. Go ahead, brother. 20, but you have not so learned Christ or Messiah. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Messiah. See, Messiah said, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Mm -hmm. He didn't have any desire for that greedy lucre that was there. And, but he also knew that the people had need of that. They carried, Yehuda, he carried the money purse, okay, for them. So they had money. But his desire wasn't money. Okay, go ahead, brother. 22, that you put off concerning the former manner of life, Amen. that old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Amen. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man, which after the Most High is created in righteousness and true Holiness. Again, modeling ourselves after our Hamashiach. Mm -hmm. 25 or 4, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Being that body of our Hamashiach. Mm -hmm. 26, be ye angry and sin not. 
Let not the sun go down upon your anger. He didn't say don't ever be angry. He, he, sometimes there's a place for righteous indignation or anger. But he said, be ye anger, angry and don't sin seven. not. Right. In other words, sometimes when you get mad, a lot of times the best thing to do is try and keep your mouth shut if you can. And then make sure that you think about how you're going to deliver a sentence. So he says, be you anger. And then it also he said, let not the sun don't go down upon your wrath. You got to be quick to forgive. 70 times 7 if necessary. Yes, go ahead. 27, neither give opportunity to that devil. Because that's what we're doing. Uh-huh. 28, let him that stole steal no more. Amen. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may give to him that needs. See, that's why you want to have money, if you're going to have it, is so that you're going to be able to have to give to those that are in need. Mm -hmm. that's, that's Paul's putting it out straight. Go ahead. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying or building up, that it may minister grace unto the ones that hear. So don't let things come out of your mouth that's going to be insulting mm -hmm. or demeaning to other people. It's not just, you know, what you want to put your label on. It's anything. Before you speak, you want to think. How's it, what I'm going to say going to affect this other person? And we'll still say things to offend that we don't mean to do. But we need to be more like that because we're trying to build up or edify the body of the Messiah. And we want to make sure we're not tearing it down. Because mm -hmm. you're either gathering the sheep or the flock, or you're scattering it. There's mm -hmm. nothing in between. Go ahead. 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of Amen. Elohim, whereby you are sealed unto the day, unto the day of redemption. Yes. Let all bitterness and anger, wrath and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all evil intent. Amen. 32, and be kind one to another, even tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Yahuwah, for the anointed sake, have forgiven you. Yeah, only he did it because for our Messiah's sake, for uh -huh. his son, he has forgiven us. Amen. First Corinthians chapter five. We're gonna wrap it up here. First Corinthians chapter five and verse seven. Seven and eight. What are we to purge out? Purging out the old alone. Okay, everybody there? Yeah, I'm here now. Nose is running, huh? It is. Been doing all morning. <laughs> Chapter 5, verse 7 says, Purge out, cleanse out, therefore, the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened, for even Christ, the Messiah, our Passover, is sacrifice for us. Man, so much in one little mm -hmm. sentence. He says, Purge out or get rid of, cleanse out that, therefore, the old leaven, the sin that's in our life. That's what we're doing. That's why we're having this this week, that you may become a new lump, just like our Messiah. As you are unleavened, and we got, we're got we trying to become like Messiah, which is that unleavened bread sacrifice, for even our Hamashiach, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Amen. Verse 8, therefore, let us keep the feast, Amen. not with that old leaven, Neither with that leaven of malice, and that with that malice is an uh, evil intention. Okay, not with malice or, or I lost my place or malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, which our Messiah is. I remember when I, uh, I was in a Seven Day Baptist con congregation, I was trying to convince the pastor that we need to keep the feast days. And he's like, where do you get, you know, anything? And, and I went right to this. And I, he said, you don't think they're talking literally about keeping the Feast of Unleavened Bread? I said, well, it certainly sounds like it to me, the way it's written there. He says, therefore, let us keep the feast. Didn't say, let us kick it over to the side and keep Christmas and Easter <laughs> right. and things like that. So let us keep the feast. And not with the old leaven. 
like they did prior to Messiah, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes that he was always on, neither with the leaven of malice, because that's what they were doing, unsincere and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Go ahead, brother. Uh, that's it. That's it. John, this will be last. John chapter 6. Got a few verses in there. Yep. John, yeah, they're not that many. No, I don't. John, as long as I don't. John chapter 6, and I'm going to pick it up at verse 50, and I'm going to skip this skip a little bit, and we'll just wrap it up. Okay. We get, we get that. Talking about the bread. Chapter 6 of John, chapter, verse 50. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven. This is the Messiah speaking here. Mm -hmm. That a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So he's going to give up his life and his body and everything that the Messiah was of himself for the sins of the world. Okay, it says 52. It says the Jews therefore argued among themselves, saying, Now how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Okay, mm -hmm. now we're just going to skip it right down to verse 63, and he's going to tell them. It is the spirit that quickeneth, or it gives life. Amen. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. That's why he wasn't afraid to give up his flesh, mm -hmm. because he knew what was coming. See, we know, but we don't know like he knew. Okay, so he said the flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit that lives, makes us live. Go ahead, brother. Down, skip down to 67 and 68. It says, then Yahushua said unto the twelve, will you also go away? And then Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You has the words of eternal life. Amen. Because a lot of his disciples at that time departed. They couldn't understand that. So hopefully yeah. someone got something out of the message we had today and they were yeah. you were edified and whether or not you're keeping the first day of unleavened bread or now, you know, I hope you had a great feast whenever you kept it. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you were working to get the sin out, that you were picking up the true meaning of the feast of unleavened bread. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the Philadelphia Assemblies, we uh, uh, ask you to do so. Cost nothing, no obligation. Uh, if you like this video or any of the videos, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Share it to your Facebook page. And make sure to hit that notification bell so you get notified of our next video. And again, may Yahuwah bless until we meet again.